In the last video, we tied these pies together completely so we won't have to log into these pies every single time we want to start up the supercomputer. So now that we've done that, we're actually ready to demo our supercomputer. So the first thing that we need to do, if you recall, we have that machine file where we have the IP addresses of the machines that we want to take part in the supercomputing. So that's the first thing that we need to do is we need to go into that machine file and edit it. So um, just as a, as a quick note, uh, we are on the master node right now. So mine is 192.168.0.20. Uh, so make sure you're on your master node, not your uh, secondary node here. So now what we want to do is edit our machine file, and our machine file is located, if you followed along, uh, it's located CD, oh, oops, well I guess we're actually there probably, so yeah, there's MPI testing, so CD into MPI testing, if you don't recall, we stored it in home, so it would be like this, CDI MPI testing, if you didn't, um, you're not in that directory at the moment. So MPI testing, ls just to make sure, and there is indeed our machine file. So now we want a sudo nano machine file. And now you can see we've got the master node here, and now it's time that we add our second node, which is 192, 168, and 21 for myself, different for you. Control X to leave it, and Y to save it, and enter to save it as the same file. Now, the next thing that we want to do is Actually, let's execute um, our supercomputing script. So we'll use the same kind of uh, C code as before. And what we're going to want to do is MPI exec. And again, just make sure you can do this. So type in which MPI exec, for example. And you should have it output this. If it doesn't output anything, you've incorrectly added it to your path, or you maybe never added it to your path. So make sure you can do this. If you can't do this, you need to edit um, this. Uh, profile and add this here to your path. Anyway, continuing on. Oops, sorry, let me mute my speakers. Skype. Now, the next thing we want to do now is again MPI exec. What's the file name that we want to use here? It's machine file. How many nodes do we want to use for n? And we actually want to use two this time. And where uh, what do we want to actually run? And that's going to be uh, M M P I C H underscore build examples slash calculate pi so CPI. All set. Hit enter. Hopefully that works for us. It sure enough did. You see process zero of two is on Raspberry Pi, and process one of two is on Raspberry Pi. Pi is approximately blah, blah, blah. well. Right now you're a little uncertain. Uh, no doubt if this really ran on two devices or just one device because both devices have the same name Raspberry Pi and Raspberry Pi so either you can just take my word for it or you can follow along where we're gonna actually change our host names so let's change node 2's host name so we know for sure that we are indeed using uh, another device so to change the host name, we can actually do this. We can change the host name of another device on our master node because we did indeed tie them together anyway. So what we can do is do ssh pi at 192.168.0.21, one, right? So I'm on my master node and I'm referencing uh, the secondary node. And then what we want to do is sudo echo and here's where you can put in the name of your new pi. What do you want the name to be? So in my case, I'm just going to call it node 002. Okay. And so now we've got space to go all the way up to 999 uh, nodes. So we got plenty of room here. And then space bar, and then do sudo t, and then etc and host name. So that's what we need to change, basically. So now what we're going to do, uh-oh, we've got this sudo echo. Let me fix that. I typoed that. Uh, so it's supposed to be a singular quote there. Um, so that singular quote, basically what it's doing is it's ssh into this pi. And then what it's going to do is it's going to go sudo echo. And it's going to echo this. And it's doing it with this host name. So anyway, coming down here. So let me make sure I typed everything else right and didn't typo. Um, that looks 
good. So we'll hit enter and that should be it. So now what we want to do is we have renamed the other pie. So let me switch over to it uh, here. Hit enter and you'll see that it doesn't look like it's been renamed. So now what we need to do actually is to log out and log back into this pie. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. To log out, again, you can just hit control D. Um, and that's just going to close it entirely. So I'm going to reopen it. Where are you, extra putty? There we go. 192.168.0.21. Now your login information, your username is still pi, right? And your password's still the same. It's just your host name that it will be changed. Okay, I guess a logout isn't going to work. So instead, let's go sudo shutdown minus h. Or actually, sudo sh shutdown. We're just going to reboot. So uh, do sudo shutdown minus r. Hit enter, and now it's just going to reboot um, my Pi and your Pi. So we'll just wait for it to boot up again, and we'll try this again. So anyways, when we're all done with this, and once we log in, and once this one's all started up again, got to wait for it to fully reboot, we should see that the name has changed. So once the name has changed, what we're going to do is uh, rerun what we just ran a second ago. So uh, this is my master node, so we can even prepare it already. Um, to run this again, and you'll see that it will actually change uh, the host name here in a minute. Looks like my Pi is up, the lights are blinking, so let's try it. So we're going to log in to 192.168.0.21. Again, username won't have changed. Oops. Log in, and there we go. So Pi at node 002. Cool. I uh, don't really think I need to use this window anymore, so I'm not going to bother um, fixing this window. So I'm just going to minimize this one. And now we're going to run the same command again. So if you don't know, <laughs> instead of retyping it out again, you can hit up arrow, up arrow. Actually, we're lost. So you'd hit up arrow here, and you can see where we changed the host name. Up arrow again, up arrow, up arrow. I'm not finding it now. This is annoying. Okay. So, okay, this is all we need to use right here. MPI exec, ev, machine file, two. Okay, so we'll hit run this again. And this time, you'll see that the first process ran on just Raspberry Pi, which is the master node. And the second process, or process zero of two and process one of two, um, this one ran on node zero, zero, two. So now you can see that the processes did indeed run separately. So just for kicks, let's do this, and we'll use one here, run that. And you can see that it actually, interestingly enough, literally took twice as long, right? As you know, somewhat expected that it would take twice as long. Let's run that one more time. And again. Okay, so you see we're coming up with relatively, just, just for more proof that we are indeed using both processors here. Uh, the clock time is a pretty steady 0.00234-ish. But, and when we're only using one, but then if we add, change the number to two, hit enter, it's, wow, that took even longer that time. Let's do it again. Well, it, actually, it's taking much longer to use both pies now. <laughs> Look at that. So actually, it's taking significantly longer. That one is, we're now at the 0.015. There could be a lot of reasons why it would take a lot longer. At least for one, it's got to communicate back and forth, considering the amount of processing time actually required to calculate pi. Going through, it's got to spend that time to go through the switch and all of that. So it's probably why it's actually taking longer, sadly. At first, when I was reading it, I thought it was 0. 0. 0.0009, or yeah, 0. 0. 0.0009 versus 0. 0.002, but nope. So, anyways, <laughs> so far we can see that this machine or the uh, supercomputer is not actually faster. It's probably paying a price of latency um, here. But, anyways, regardless, you did build your first supercomputer, so that is really exciting. I hope you did not build a supercomputer just to calculate pi, uh, because that's actually kind of inefficient uh, anyways, so you want to answer larger problems and at least spend a little bit more time working in between them. But anyways, 
you have now completed your first supercomputer, and if you bought the Raspberry Pis and all that, you probably built it for $80 to $120. Now it is only two nodes, hardly a real supercomputer, um, or at least one that you would imagine, but it is actually indeed a real supercomputer, so that's pretty cool. So say you wanted to expand this to four nodes, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 64. The way that you would do it now is you would copy the worker node, the second node, so in my case, 192.168.0.21, you would take that SD card and you would copy it to your computer, and then from your computer you would copy it to every other, um, every other disk. And uh, you would just change the host name using the same script that we used already. So you would access that IP, change the host name, and all that. So you want to just make sure that you're copying the second, you know, node 002 in my case. You want to make sure you're copying that as it's got the right uh, setup versus like this is the master node and it's kind of, it's the master of everything under it basically. So this is what's under it and then anything else. So like this this node can communicate very easily with this node and anything that uses the same. Uh, set up. So that's going to conclude this video um, and the basic steps to how to make your own supercomputer. So you can use MPI for all kinds of different things and it just so happens that there are MPI bindings for Python. So you can probably guess that that is going to be the next step is using Python. There might be a little bit of a hiatus between now and whenever I start putting those videos out as I've got a lot of things going on right now. Also, whenever we're done with that, I will at least show you guys a few examples of using Python uh, with MPI because that's really exciting. Also, with Python and the Raspberry Pi, you can also do robotics. So when you mesh supercomputing and a couple of uh, Raspberry Pis together plus some Python in there, uh, you can do a lot of really, really cool things, especially with robotics, um, which is really where the, where the Raspberry Pi is going to shine as compared to your typical GPU um, supercomputer where really that computer is more focused on you know brute force calculation not necessarily working in unison with itself whereas uh, well obviously they're working in unison but the the end goal is is uh, computing not necessarily working together whereas with robotics you can actually use these things to work together and that's the, the main target or the main goal is actually working in unison so that's what we're going to be doing uh, in the future videos. No idea when those will come out, uh, just because I am getting pretty busy. But um, real exciting stuff to look forward to nonetheless. So hopefully you guys enjoyed. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks for the support and subscriptions. And until next time.